Hi, this is Chris Newsom. Welcome to the Root Cause Analysis podcast, where we'll take our listeners right to the heart of the important EHS issues. We're coming to you live from Woodland Grange, a conference and hotel venue in the Midlands. In this episode of the Root Cause Analysis podcast, we'll be looking at how EHS practitioners can leverage the latest in technology to improve their company's performance. So we welcome Mark Ryder from PeopleSafe to the Root Cause Analysis podcast. Mark has 20 years leadership experience in tech companies. Two of those companies have been rated as fastest growing tech companies on the Times list. Welcome to the podcast, Mark. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. So, uh, Mark, let's uh, start off with the first question. Tell us a bit about yourself, uh, if you don't mind. Sounds pretty amazing, your intro, so (laughs) tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I mean, yeah, I have been in technology for a long time, uh, nearly 30 years, and a lot of that has been in in leadership roles, um, mainly commercial roles, but I've been managing director of organisations that have both worked in the UK and European-wide. Okay. Yeah. Why, 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 why tech? I mean, why did you get into that? What, oh, what excited you about I that? Don't, I, I don't think I um, set off on a career to be in tech. Okay. I actually went into sales first and then, you know, doors open and I ended up working for a telecoms company, I think, when the boom started mid-90s and that's history, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. What, why PeopleSafe, though, it was, it was really a route via um, the CEO of, of PeopleSafe, uh, um, our CEO, Nars. And, um, you know, when he explained to me what the company did, Mm -hmm. the first thing that sort of sprung to mind was, wow, this is amazing. This is technology for good. Okay. Um, And I really wanted to do something good. And secondly was using all of that experience. You know, we're a private equity-backed business. And uh, the transformation that he he painted as a picture for for the next three to four years was something that I thought I could make a big difference in. So that was, that was the reason. Wow. Yeah. 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 Nice. It's uh, it's nice to have a job that you, that you you clearly feel is is so rewarding. Yeah. I think a lot of our uh, listeners and viewers would, would be interested in that phrase technology for good. So what did you mean by, what just give us a bit more on that? Well, you know, ultimately the technology we provide saves lives. Okay. So um, when you, when you, I don't know how much better you can get. I mean, when I worked in telecoms, I could argue that you can pick up a phone and call for help or something, so that's technology. But this genuinely is an application and service that we provide which protects people's lives. Fantastic. I'm I'm sure we'll get into that a bit more as we go on. Um, What's interesting, you know, when when we're sort of, um, you know, we've met before and and, and looking at stuff, and and your LinkedIn profile, if people look at it, says, and I'll I'll read what it says, you know, so... Uh, protecting people 24-7, uh, 365. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you an honest question now. Yeah. Honestly, is that just a slogan or, or does that really mean something to you? Oh, no, I think that really, really does mean something to us. I mean, we are genuinely protecting people's lives. I think everybody that works at PeopleSafe feels that they are doing something for good. But to, to put a bit more uh, sort of meat on the bones, um, we are available every second of every day to receive calls um, from our from our customers emergency calls um, there isn't a second of downtime so it, you know it is a service that's always always available and the service doesn't stop um, when people finish work you know it's available 24 by 7 so we actively encourage our users to use this in their personal life as well as um, work life you know what why, why should it not cover all areas yeah, yeah. Um, I I guess the best analogy I can give is is the sort of airbag analogy, which is we all have one in our car in case of an emergency. We hope we never have to use it, you know, and I don't think mine's ever gone off. (laughs) Same here. But if it did, I'm I'm glad that technology's there, you know, to save save my life or, or, you know, from injury. Yeah. Yeah, so it's you know, something in the background you've got. I think the airbags are a really good analogy. Yeah, Yeah, interesting. Um, So... To some of our audience, loan working will just be another work-related health and safety issue they've got to deal with. Why have PeopleSafe really focused on loan working? Okay, it's a good question. So loan working is quite, um, I think, quite a historic word. I mean, effectively, we're covering um, people whose jobs have very high risk, but they work out of earshot of their okay. line managers. Yeah, yeah. They're, on, they're working on their own, they're vulnerable. And even though the, um, the chances of an incident might be low, when they happen, the seriousness of them is the seriousness of them are very high because they are on their own. They can't get they can't get help. But it's not just 
about low workers in it when, when PeopleSafe was concerned. Um, two years ago, uh, PeopleSafe conducted the largest, the largest survey ever done on, on employee uh, risk. Okay. Um, right. We interviewed something like 2,000 uh, organizations and um, the, the, the survey came back that 68% of people at work feel at some point during their working life some form of risk. Okay. Um, I feel that 60% of them particularly are vulnerable when they're traveling to and from work. So this is a different uh, sort of area now. It's not just about, you know, I'm a lone worker. It's about your commute and your travel. Yeah. And 83% of people actually said they'd actually change the way they work to improve their safety. It can be as simple as where I park the car, you know, the exit and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And then if you look at some of the services we provide, you know, I've talked about the SOS button and how that raises an alarm. We provide other services as well, such as well-being checks, check-in, check-out, and travel safe. Now, these are other features that might apply to um, other organizations. Um, I'll use um, travel safe as an example. It's a okay. new feature that we've, we've launched. Uh, you could be the last person working in an office at night, uh, nine o'clock in the evening, and you're about to commute home, um, and you're gonna take a train, or you might even want to, to cycle or whatever. Using the travel safe feature, you um, it interfaces into say um, Apple Maps, Google Maps. You set the destination as you would do if you were searching um, your browser for a postcode. You'll tell the application that you're either going by bicycle, car, train, public transport. It'll tell you how long it's going to take you to get home. Okay. Right. And if you aren't home by the time you stay, that the app says you should be home, it will raise an alarm, uh, and that will cause an alarm in our alarm receiving centre, and we'll check. On the way on that journey, wow. you can set welfare checks, timers. So you say, every 15 minutes, I'd like an, an automated re response to make sure I am okay. And if I'm not, then that would also raise an alarm. So it's a wider okay. audience than just lone worker. We call it employee well-being. It's okay. all, all employees. It makes sense, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, th those things you've described there are not traditional, well, they're not work-related tasks at all. So it enables the employer to really be looking after people the whole of the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, I, we, we, some people would call it an employ, employee perk, you know. Um, sure, other people yeah, just yeah. say, we're, we know, we're interested in the welfare of, of our staff. I mean, this industry traditionally started because of regulation, you know, Health and Safety Act 1974. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah exactly. Yeah. So people were assuming that these services were just to sort of combat regulation yeah. or to be conformed with regulation. Actually, um, we protect a lot, lot, lot of workers that don't fit into that category. They, they, yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting because, you know, you, you talk about at the beginning there the, the definition of loan working and, and, you know, we can all look at the yeah. HSE's definition of loan working, but, exactly. but I agree with you 100% and I think our, our members would as well. It's, you know, I, I might be with five other people at work, but I'm out of earshot, I'm round the corner, yeah. I'm a loan worker effectively. Yeah. And, and I think that bit of when they're outside of work, you know, I think that's amazing. You know, it seems quite unique to me that yeah, I, I think the employer it's, can look You're a vulnerable them. employee. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you're a lone worker. I yeah, carry yeah. some form of risk. And if you've got a duty of care towards your staff, you would be concerned about them working late at night and then travelling home. Yeah. I, agreed. And, and it's like, um, it, it's more than the legal. I mean, we all know health and safety law counts when you're in work and that's it. But you, you, you're enabling employers to look after them Outside of work, yeah. you know. Okay, fantastic, amazing, brilliant. Um, so, so going on from that, tell us about where the People Save product service has had the biggest impact. Okay, um, I'll give you an example. I mean, I think okay. we, I think we save lives every day of the week. So, and I think that's quite impactful. But I'll give you an example of something recently. Uh, we had a um, a food delivery driver um, going about their day to day job role. Um, and suddenly felt very tight chested, okay. a bit of a headache, a bit of a neck pain, pulled over, pressed their SOS button on their application. Our, um, our alarm receiving centre, the details pop up of that particular individual. We follow an escalation process, which is please call their line manager and let them know. Okay. So we call the line manager. I think the line manager was there within 10 minutes, but at the same time, our technology using what three words, integrates what three words, we've called an ambulance and the ambulance has arrived as well at the same time. So you've done that in, in, yeah, in the background? Yeah, our okay. alarm receiving controller would do that. You know, we've got blue light service, that's, the, that's what we do. We okay. provide the blue light response. 
And within an hour, that person was sat up in bed in hospital with two stints fitted. And actually, we play it back, that person's had a heart attack. Yeah. And this has saved their life. And that's uh, sort of one of the examples that I use yeah. quite frequently, yeah. Uh, I can see why you said at the beginning the sort of company people safe is now, you know, really interested in, in actually looking after people and, yeah. and their well being. So, you know, we're not over dramatising to say that person really unlikely to have survived without having the system. Yeah, well, back to the, the, the question about, you know, why loan working. Right. I, I'm just trying to envisage what would have happened if that person didn't have our service and had had a heart attack and there was no one with them, what would they have done? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. Worst it's, case it's, scenario. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very difficult to see how anything else would happen. To be fair, I think. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we we'll go on from that, you know, really impactful story to, to talk about some sort of nuts and bolts stuff around people safe. So you've talked about there. It, it, it keeps people safe effectively when yeah. they're outside of work. Now that's there's a huge positive there. People might be thinking and be concerned about sort of GDPR and in, in, invasion of privacy, et cetera, and that sort of stuff. I mean, do, do you get concerns raised about that? And what are the answers, I suppose? <laughs> oh, listen, we, you know, we, we work in business, and I don't think there's a single organisation in the world that doesn't ask us to do a DBIA check or something like yeah. that. You know? So the first thing I'd say is if we just handle the, 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 the formalities. You know, we're ISO 27001, Cyber Essentials, Cyber Essentials Plus, we're pen tested every year that our platform is secure and robust and we are audited every year to those standards that I just mentioned. So we, you know, we take this very, very seriously. In terms of um, a, personal's data, a person's data, yeah. the first thing is we collect this data to give the best service we can possibly give. So the more you tell us, the better our alarm receiving centre can deal with that, the controllers. So um, I, if I use that van driver as an example, if they had given us the four basic bits of information, you know, sex, you know, telephone number, et cetera, we would have been able to call an ambulance, et cetera. If they told us they were suffering from something, you know, the angina, if they give us their vehicle registration yeah. number, whatever, our alarm receiving centre can give a much better service. So we only collect data okay. to provide that service. Yeah. The next thing I would say is, no one has access to this data, okay? The alarm receiving centre only see an individual's data when an alarm goes off. That's the only okay. time they see it, so Sorry. it pops up on Makes their, sense. On their yeah. pod software. Okay. Everything else is role-based access, okay? So no one can go on to our portal and start you know, going through it unless they are an administrator. And an administrator, there's probably two in an organisation. They have those details anyway, they think they're entering into our, and into our um, portal. Yeah. After that, you'd be a line manager and you only see what is in your team. Okay? Okay. So um, I think what you're referring to probably is, can we track people? Yes, it, it um, is. Yeah, that's okay, right. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. The, I'll to get to the, the question, point. To get to the point, yeah. can we track people? It's up to the customer. Okay. We can switch it on, we can switch it off. What I mean by that is, if you have got a role where you want to do welfare checks or something every 15 minutes, or whatever, of course we're going to be polling that device and someone could... But if you, um, you, know, if you don't want that, we can, we can turn it off. Okay. So it is, it is a decision that a company makes, and I think it's very much role-based what that yeah. actual person does. Some companies insist we do it. If you're, if you're um, a, a transport uh, manager, yeah, managing a team sense. of uh, fleet drivers, you probably want to know where they are all the time. But, but it's more safety-driven, It's the, because they've got other, I'm sure they've got other things that track a vehicle, yeah, yeah. but it's about I safety. So. Yeah, it's always about safety. Interesting. That, that, I mean, that, that is, you're, you were right to sort of zero in on, yeah. on the tracking thing, because yeah. that is, I think that is the question that a lot of people might, it depends on the culture of your company, but yeah. they might be worried about that. But, yeah. but you know, it, what you're saying is bespoke and you can sort of turn features on and off. And yeah, well, it's certainly the, the tracking you can yeah. turn off. Okay. The only time you wouldn't turn it off is, you don't turn it off, is when you press the SOS button or an alarm goes off for whatever reason, any of the other features we said, if we can't see exactly where you are at that particular time, we couldn't get the blue light services to you. Yeah. And people say, on average, gets a blue light response within four minutes. This is a business grade service okay. because we know who you are where you are uh, using what three words integration we'll get something there very quickly to you so we need to know at least that yeah it um, makes sense yeah. and, and just to be clear that the blue light service you talk about that basically it means that you all make, you have a 
quicker access to those services than the average member of the public. Let's yeah, say. so um, let's just, um, I think, a scenario. Um, you've worked late at night um, in a, maybe an office that you're not familiar with. You leave and there is some sort of incident, harassment, abuse, whatever it is. Okay. And you dial 999. You will go through to a call centre and then they'll ask you all those questions. Who are you? Where are you? And you'll be a bit disorientated, perhaps, and all the rest of it. OK, then we'll put you through to right. whichever service. We'll put you through to the police. They'll ask you pretty much the same sort of questions again. This is all time that's elapsed. OK, nothing wrong with the 999 service. It's just that's how it yeah, works. Yeah. We have what's called unique reference numbers. OK, a URN is the short way. And mm -hmm. Effectively, we are audited. Um, we have an accreditation, BS8484, which is five parts, okay? And if you've got BS8484, you're allowed to have a URN number from the police. So when a call comes up on our pod software, we don't dial 999 if it's life-threatening. Yeah. We go straight through to the local police station, the local police okay. control. So if it was wow. Surrey Police, it would be Surrey Police. If it was Met Police, it would be Met Police. And the ARC controller just hits a button and it auto-dials into that. And we're straight through to the control room. And we don't have to do all that, who are you, where are you, and all the rest of it. We know, you know if you didn't even know what street you were on, we'd tell you when we get, we get the police there very quickly. So that's the, that's I mean, the service yeah. that we offer, yeah. yeah. Be, be, like you said there, I mean, someone's having an accident, something's happened to them. I mean, you know, they're going to be disorientated, all the stuff you said, but they don't need to worry about that because you, you've got all that it's information. Incredible. I mean, we've had yeah. so many scenarios. I mean, there was a, a scenario where someone was um, driving along the motorway and crashed into the central reservation and they felt the best service would be to, to, uh, to do our SOS. Um, okay. We knew exactly where they were. We could get the service to them much quicker. You know, you don't have to, I think I'm between Junction 2 and Junction yeah, 7. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, for me, personally, that's a nightmare situation <laughs> yeah. to, to sort of think about where you are. And, yeah. you, know, you, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. So, so we were talking about wellbeing. I mean, Mate UK have done you know, several surveys, one recently, that, that shows that you know, A, wellbeing is really important to employers, and, and it really helps with recruitment and retention if people feel they're looked after. Are you seeing the same sort of thing? Oh, absolutely. It's um, definitely a conversation we have. So I think traditionally our, um, our services, we've been talking about the health and safety executive in an organisation, yeah. but now actually a lot of our conversations are with HR, you know, and, and okay. that is because of employee wellbeing. And they kind of see this, like you say, as a, a recruitment and retention um, type of tool. Um, imagine, you know, if you're working front line and um, you've you know, had a lot of harassment in your job. Yeah. Um, what's your inclination to put in the extra hours, um, uh, you know, et cetera? It, yeah. You know, it's, it's difficult. So, I just want to get home and be safe. Yeah, so, so when you're offering this to your employee, you're, you're effectively, um, you're, you actually are actually giving them a... a I, a perk might not be the right word, but you are taking their well-being really seriously. So um, if, if I was talking to an organisation um, that had maybe some, some field engineers out there mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, you know, and I was going to apply for a job, I, I guess I'd want to work for the organisation that said, by the way, if you work for us, we're, we're going to look after you 24 by 7 and, and, and in your working hours. So I think HR see this as a, another, you know, I've got this and I'm taking my staff very, very seriously. And it, and it helps with, with the recruitment and retention of, yeah. of those staff. And we, we, like you've done surveys, this isn't one of our own survey, but we've, we've definitely, we de get surveys from, uh, one from Deloitte recently, right. that talked about for every one pound invested in employee wellbeing, there's a four pound return on investment. And I think that meant by that, that the employees are happier, wow. they feel more satisfied, They'll work, they'll work longer hours, not that you're asking them to work longer hours, yeah. but, you know, the dark nights, you know, there are a lot of people in the UK that as soon as it gets dark in the evening, five o'clock, think, I want to be on that train, I want to be in the car, and I want to be going home. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they, they feel at risk. They feel at risk, you know, exactly. This place. So this type of technology will allow them yeah. to feel that bit of, bit, you know, have that bit of, I guess it's like a companion. You yeah. Know? We call, we use Travel Safe, really, we call it a companion yeah. app. It's with you all the time. Yeah, it makes sense. You, yeah, exactly. You're not on your own. You know, you, you just the, the the alert goes off. You press it, whatever, and and you, you're in contact. You know, so yeah, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Fantastic. So another benefit of uh, of, of the uh, of this service. Yeah, um, we put on. Um, we do have 
tools like ROI calculators on our website, you know, that, that help people try and okay. assess what that might mean to them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a, I think it's a really important point, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, that, that's always one of the big challenges for your EHS practitioners is that ROI, return on investment, yeah, proving that exactly. it works, all of that sort of Listen, stuff. Listen, we, we have this, um, I guess it's uh, a throwaway statement in some respects, but we say, you know, one of our applications is less than the price of a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, and how many cups of coffee do your staff have every week? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, they're, they're not, these are not expensive things, but they have a very, very big impact. To, to getting towards the sort of the, the end of my questions, yeah. what is next for people safe? I mean, you're making massive advances and doing a brilliant job. What's, yeah. what's on the horizon? What's next, do you think? Um, so we have um, a number of new products. Okay. Um, I'll give you the names. You might want to ask more about them, but I think okay. I've already explained Travel Safe to you. Yes, got that. We've got another product called Roam Safe, okay, okay. which is uh, um, the eSIM in your phone uh, being um, so. Roam Safe is um, your mobile phone is linked to one network, okay, whoever it is, it's your right. service provider. Yeah. Many of our um, customers have very high risk, um, so we are able to enable. The virtual SIM in your in some phones, not every phone has it, but iPhone 8 onwards would have it, and a lot of the um, Android phones have it, where we can pr pr enable that SIM in your phone to be a roaming SIM. I will go over all four of the UK networks, okay. increasing right. the coverage, because there are some areas where some phones work and others don't. I'm sure you've yes. experienced it yourself with your, with your friends, your partners, whatever. Why is yours working, mine's yeah, not, yeah. kind of yes. thing. So that's a product that we're launching. Um, and then we have... Um, so we've, we've just migrated um, our, our customers onto our new portal, which is on the Azure stack. It's all API um, based. So we are starting to talk to customers about um, API integration into HR platforms, SAP, Workday, and um, also into workforce management platforms. So imagine a utility um, or an engineer is getting a bit app fatigued because they have to have so many apps on their phone. Yeah, yeah. They they do have to check in and check out every day when they start their when they start their job. What's your first task? With with our API integration, that would also start their application as well. They wouldn't have to do two things at once. So there's API integration. Um, we are um, just just launched Apple Watch, so we now have the service on Apple Watches, and that's a that's a first. Um, we recently. Um, acquired a business in Canada, so we've got international expansion into North America. And I think really importantly for us, it's working with partners like Make UK so that we can expand, you know, um, our messages because I, I, you know, not everybody knows about the services that we offer. So working with a great partner, we can, we can expand the messaging that yeah. out there. Yeah, and, and it's interesting that last point because, you know, when Make UK are looking at partners, you know, our, our priority is to look after our members and, and provide them with services that actually enhance their, you know, for us, environment, health, safety, yeah. well-being, performance. And I think, you know, what we've discussed today, it just demonstrates that it does that because it's, you know, it's, you know, it's not just the law and you've got to do yeah. health and safety work out. It's actually going well beyond that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah that's, I that's why we... That, is, that certainly is the biggest change that we've probably seen in the last 12 months from having conversations about, uh, oh, I've got an organization and I think, you know, we're 5,000 employees and I want to uh, protect my very, very high risk, you know, uh, workers. That's about a thousand of them. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a case study that's out there for uh, Dignity Funerals. It's the one we've just put out recently where they said, yeah, we have got that thousand, but we've also got 4,000 other people that work for us. What can you do for them? So for the um, 1,000 very, very high-risk workers, there was a, a solution we put in place that involved a, a device. And for the other 4,000, we provided an application. They rolled it out to the entire company. So we are starting to now, that message of all employee, employee well-being, duty of care to your staff is resonating with organisations. And that's, yeah. that's the, the big change for us. And that's, we, we can relate to that as well because we are, I mean, there's, as you know, there are standards about well-being and, and companies are encouraged to look after the mm. well-being of their staff. It's a word that's thrown around a lot, but we are getting a lot of members talking to us about, you know, we don't we just want to comply with the law. We're interested in our employees and mm. looking after them and their well-being. And, and for me, this is just a, a, yeah. a nice 
way to address a lot of those issues. Yeah, I think um, I think we were talking about you know post post pandemic. You know how how yeah. has everything changed? So we know a fundamental change was that more people now have a working from home hybrid role. Okay, so you know. You, if you look at the HSE regulations, they will say that a home worker is a loan worker because yeah. you are on your own. Okay, yeah, and that's yeah, the, yeah. that's a definition. I don't think everyone sees it that way, but that is that is the definition. But um, we think um, we think a little bit more than you know. We think that what we've seen as a as an organisation is an absolute change in. Um, people's tolerances and stuff like that. So if you read the news like I do every day, you know, I wouldn't want, you know, if you're a, a frontline worker now working in something like retail, you yeah. know, you see it every day, you know, that, that's a 25% increase in, you know, um, harassment and abuse towards staff. And, and, and I, you know, I think people have just lost their patience, you know, and, and the, these, yes. these things are just increasing yeah. all the time. So I think, and, and organizations are, are, are recognizing that. And I think it's probably at the sea level now, you know, what do I do about the employee well-being, you know, um, from, of my staff? Yeah, I think that's right, and particularly that issue around, unfortunately, you know, that issue around workplace violence or not even workplace, you know, it's, I agree, it seems to be any public facing uh, activity, you yeah. know, you are, there's at least a risk of that, and yeah. whatever the reasons might be, it seems to be increasing, I mean, does, yeah. you know, there are, there are statistics that bear that out, so just another layer of, of protection that uh, yeah. employers can offer people, fantastic. No, I mean, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very you much. Are. And, 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 and now I'm busy, you are, so I appreciate <laughs> yeah. you coming in to speak to no, us. No, it's a lovely drive, lovely place. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice, nice offices. So. Yes, we're at uh, Woodland Grange uh, here. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic, great place. So uh, thank you very much and see you another time. Thank you. I really enjoyed the conversation that I had with Mark Ryder today from PeopleSafe. I think the main thing that it's shown me is that as EHS practitioners, we need to not only be uh, experts and to be knowledgeable in the, the usual EHS subjects, but also be aware of the latest technologies that are available uh, and the ways we can use those to our advantage in terms of keeping people safe. This is the part of the show where we talk to one of our consultants who's going through the IPD process to become a chartered member of IOSH. Hopefully it will help to demystify that process for you. Hi Leila, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. I'm good. How are you? Yes, very good. Yeah, brilliant. So we're, we're here again on our um, regular update of your progress to Chartered Membership of IOSH. We are, yes. Yes. Is it, <laughs> is it going well? Um, it is, actually. So I have progressed since last time, which is always a bonus. Okay. Um, so where am I at now? I am now yeah, tell actually... Us about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm registered. This is it. This is happening. Cool. So Brilliant. we've confirmed that it was route two was the route that I needed to go down because I'd done my diploma after the exams when the open book came in. Um, IOSH um, want the people that have done that sort of cohort to go through the, the route two access, which means okay. that I now have this um, part A and part B of an open assessment, um, which you register for. So I've registered for that. So come the 14th of August through to the 28th of August, I think it is, you get a two week period to do it in. I now have my welcome to the world of IOSH. You're going to first part, part A, 48 questions. You're going to need to answer if you're successful. Part B, two questions that are like essay or report type questions. And by okay. the way, here's the syllabus and it's, it's really long. <laughs> long yes. so a little bit frightening of course um because it, it's bringing back all those wonderful memories of the nebosh diploma <laughs> gosh right. okay um, interesting very interesting but then hopefully within that two week period that will all be done and dusted um and then i have this nine step program that they inform me that what happens after that and it's a further nine steps that i have to achieve to then be you know hopefully awarded chartership okay. did you want to have a little look through what the what the steps are are people would people like yes. to know that I, 100 i think so um but before that ju just so just to confirm because you know you and i have talked a lot since uh what, it'll be like two months ago or a month ago something like that <laughs> since we last uh, yeah. who knows exactly yeah. um so so things changed considerably didn't they because yes. you and i 
in different ways both went back to IOSH and, and as you outlined just then certainly my understanding was that the NEBOSH diploma got you onto uh, the route where you had to do a skills development portfolio and then you went through to uh, the interview but uh, as you said just then because uh, you did the let's call it the new diploma the 2021 2020 diploma that qualifies you for is it route two it was route two yes route two yeah. yeah so in that then you have to actually do another assessment the open assessment that you're yes. talking about uh so that's interesting because i i personally in my view i don't think a lot of people knew that so the old diploma before 2020 uh is the skills development portfolio and interview with the new diploma it's the open assessment and then you move on to the interview is that correct uh, yes the interview is, okay. is at the end the last sort of step of these yeah. this nine okay. steps that right. happen after that okay. so good so, so yes just, that I just changes that clear, yeah, yes definitely because i yeah good okay yeah. right so yes so yes please tell us a, a bit more about the nine steps you were talking about that'd be great well, once, like I say, providing I am successful with the open book assessments, both part A and part B, which which is a little bit terrifying, but it will be fine. Um, yeah. I obviously get that marked um, and then results are then um, subjected for verification. So I've got to kind of wait to make sure that a bit like what Nebosch does, as we all know, they always go off for verification and make sure that yeah. nothing's been missed and all that good stuff. Um, then my CPD, which we did speak about last time in the whole blueprint area, that goes yes. off to be audited. So okay. um, I'm going to have contact at some point with IOSH as they're going through my CPD to sort of say, you know, have you got evidence of this? Can you talk about this? All that sort of uh, hopefully good stuff. I mean, not an issue because, as you saw, I've got 38 hours in there already and I'm ready to update it with some more after this week as well, of course. Um, okay. the, the results then come back from that as either a pass or a pass with comments. So there may right. be bits and pieces that I need to add into my CPD. But once that comes back, I'm then able to book on to um, to be able to do a presentation of my record of employment and a presentation of a specific, as, as I understand it, a specific sort of subject that IOSH want me to to present on. So I've got time to um, have preparation for that. And then it will be um, about four weeks after that, I book on to have the interview and do the, the whole presentation there and then um, okay. and then the last step that it says basically well sorry it says two weeks before the interview the administrator is going to contact me and say this is how it's all going to run this is how you're going to present this is what you need to do so on and so forth and then step nine 21 days after that hopefully <laughs> yeah. is when I'm confirmed whether I have the chartered status or not okay. so it's still quite a fair amount of work to do but yeah. but my I will be very honest my I always worry about the assessments. Once I've smashed yeah. that out the park, the rest of it, I'm actually really looking forward to. So that's yeah, fine. yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, so, so I understand and, and, and the listeners and viewers understand on the open assessment <laughs> there, as it's called, is that a bit like the NEBOSH, you know, open assessment? In other words, can you go off and research the answers and you get yes. a certain amount of time? Yes. Okay. So part A is the multiple choice 48 questions. And that has to be done from the moment that you actually start it. You have a three hour window to do that. OK, in. right. Um, interesting. But then once and you have to pass that to be able to go on to part B. But then part B, from the moment you have passed part A, you have then a seven day period to answer these two um essay type questions okay. um I, I don't think there are many words certainly not as many as the nebosch diploma thank goodness but you do have opportunity to go and you know you've got this time period where you can go and sort of look and review and understand and refer back to the syllabus and all the all the stuff that they want you to do okay okay and uh, just just i'm just interested in terms of logistics and i think our viewers and listeners will be interested you know when you've got this sort of seven day window certainly for that second bit I mean, what what's your what's your in your mind at the minute? What's your plan there? Are you going to sort of, you know, uh, are you, are you going to take out time to do that or do it in the evenings? I'm just interested what, what your thoughts sure. might be. So the 14th, which is the opening day for me, um, I mm. believe is is a Wednesday, Wednesday or a Thursday. I can't quite remember which day of the week it is. Um, okay. And I'm and I'm 
uh, being a rather wonderful Make UK EHS consultant, I am out and about with one of my members for the, for that week. Okay. Um, so I'll be with them for when it actually comes out. But on the Friday, I have time put aside to go for part A, because mm. that to me is is the make or break. So if I can get that out the way, that Friday, the whatever the date is. Yeah, and yeah. then that gives me then until the following Friday, which is the 23rd, to do the um the part b the almost the assessment side of things um and again although okay. um i'm out with uh, our our lovely clients on monday tuesday wednesday um make have allowed me to put thursday and friday aside to basically complete the assessment so my plan is friday okay. part a hopefully pass it saturday sunday head down get your head in the books have a look at what the questions are monday tuesday wednesday out at members but sit with it percolating at the back of your mind so you can kind of start formulating thursday friday head down do not move until it is done that's my plan okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah whilst taking regular breaks of course and all of, stuff, hundred, yeah. every 20 minutes you know don't forget yeah. the, the <laughs> movement of the eyes and all that yes of course yeah yeah Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think that's really um, uh, well. Obviously, it's interesting, and you know, the, the routes moved on so much and, and changes since since I did it personally, and it seems to move and improve maybe a little bit every time. So mm -hmm. that's again really interesting for our, our uh, listeners, viewers to to know about. Um, I think the other thing is that um, our advice to uh, any companies that have got people going through this is like we have in this example you know give people time to do that because at the end of the day yeah i mean clearly getting to be chartered member uh, chartered member status is beneficial for you personally or anyone else personally but it is also very beneficial for the organization you know whether yeah. it's in a consultancy basis like this with make uk or it's you know just no, it's just being a, the EHS manager, director, advisor, whatever it might be, you know, it benefits the company, you being chartered. Yeah. And so we we would be saying to any of our members that you should give people time to do everything. I mean, you know, that's hopefully obvious. We don't need to say that, but yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, good to know that we're doing the same thing. So, of you know, of course, of course. But, and, and I wouldn't have expected anything different. This has been very no, supportive oh, oh, the company have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not scripted, awesome. well, by good the way. To hear. Yeah. No, no, of course not. We don't have a script, do we? No, exactly. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. Um, so the, the other thing, um, so when we talk uh, at the next episode then, given the dates you've yes. just talked about, you will have gone, bearing in mind if that's sort of, you know, this, this episode probably will come out in uh, July, so yeah. that's going to be maybe September, the next episode, you will have done those bits and pieces then. That's the hope. Pieces. Yes, yeah. all that oh, hard okay. work and effort. Yes, that's what I will have done. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can see that you're looking forward to it. So that, that'd yeah. be really good to have uh, your your feedback on that um, because you, you just don't get to see inside that process if you're someone thinking about doing it. So yes. fantastic. The other thing that I thought it was just worth you and I talking about is whilst we, you and I have been talking to IOSH, you know, when we discovered this, um, you know, old diploma, new diploma, difference in what route yeah. you go down the other thing we got into a bit of detail with IOSH was around the new the completely new method uh, of, of getting to chartered membership that's coming in summer 2024 so yes. you know we got a lot more I mean IOSH have announced this it's not a secret but we got a lot more information about it we've made some LinkedIn announcements on our, our views on it and all that sort of stuff but yeah. I thought it was worth us just talking about um, that a little bit because you know if our if our members aren't enrolled on the journey you're going through yet yeah and they leave and there's no problem with this but if they do that after summer 2024 which is a bit vague it's a whole season not a month but okay you know whenever it does start the new system they will need to know this new system because that's what they'll be doing not what you're doing at, at the moment so i thought yes. we could just talk about that if that's all right with you absolutely so okay. as i understand it i mean i hmm. um the IOSH have been really good, actually. They they kept me informed that although okay. you know, you're know you going to see new announcements coming out, but it's not actually affecting the route that you're on right now. Um, right. But, but, you know, go in and have a look at what you could be doing sort of thing. Um, and I think that actually, whereas I have these nine steps, they're now down to six steps. 
So yes, I feel correct. like yeah, they yeah. may have streamlined this, which is which I think can only benefit anyone who's looking to do it after the summer of 2024, because it, it you know it's streamlined. It's gonna it's gonna work yeah. better. Um, but I also understand that there is still the open assessment. Um, yeah. And that, um, but this time there's also like bigger and beastier reports in it. So maybe a little bit of what I'm doing now, but but on a bit of a larger scale from, from my part so, yeah. B. That's kind of how it feels. Yeah. Well, I've got the stats written down mm -hmm. here. So I'll go through them and then we can sort of, you know, maybe talk about them. So first of all, like you said, yes, it used to be nine. Or sorry, it is nine, as you're, yes. you've just outlined. But now it's going to be six steps. And the other important thing to say here is that there is only one route. It doesn't matter in the new yes, world. What you've right? done. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't matter what you've done, that is the route. Whereas now there's route one, route two, some other routes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This is it, you know, the, yeah. this is the way you get to be chartered. So just to go through that, and, and I will just read off the list here because I can't memorise six things, of course. Um, so you, you, first of all, you have to be a certified member. So you've either done, so you've got to that somehow, you've done the NEBOSH certificate, for example, I think is yeah. the most common route. So you're a certified member. You have to be doing continual professional development yeah. uh, and and have completed the blueprint assessment. So, again, yes. yeah. I mean, that's you, it's you're just doing standard that anyway. stuff. Yeah. Standard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so that's that. Then um, you have the knowledge assessment. So um, the knowledge assessment is an online assessment. Sounds, I'm going to say, a bit like what you're doing at the moment, certainly the yeah. part one of that. So, um it says, and I'm reading off the, the guidance from IOSH here, the outline, sorry, the online assessment verifies your understanding of key concepts. So, mm. you know, it's going to be things like um, risk assessment, incident investigation, behavioural safety, key concepts. So that's the third step uh, in that. So we've got be a certified member, be doing CPD. That's one and two. Three is the knowledge assessment online. Uh, we've then got, and this is complete, well, it's a change to what's there at the moment. Step mm. four is the portfolio of evidence. So um, you have to do that now if you're on route one. It's now at the moment it's called the SPD. Um, uh, sorry, SDP, uh, Skills Development Portfolio. Yeah. In the new world, it's called portfolio of evidence. Um, and what I should have done, this is completely new, is uh, not everyone might have seen this. You and I have. You've got the 12 core competencies uh, that that. Uh, I ask say there are so it's those sort of normal things that people are familiar with and the uh, portfolio of evidence has to be eight of those 12 things hmm. so there's 12 things you know we won't go through a list of what they are but you have to present evidence on eight of those 12 um so that that's not that different you know it yeah. is uh, seven key competencies at, at the moment it's going to be eight and they're from that 12 which blueprint yeah. is based on yeah. but what i found interesting when reading the detail and, and you and i haven't discussed this yet but when reading the detail of that um those eight of the 12 aren't up to you or i or whoever's going through it to decide those eight are based on your results in the knowledge assessment so, interesting yeah. So when you do the knowledge assessment, the online exam, for want of a better phrase, um, the eight things you have to answer are based on your answers. So I, well, I would imagine there's no further guidance on this, but I would imagine things that you perhaps didn't score as well at mm. uh, in that you. Um, those are what the questions are going to be on. Yeah. And, and the final point there is that out of those eight, the behavioural stuff it's not a very good word to use, but the behavioural elements of which there are three, uh, I think those are mandatory. So yeah. three of those eight are mandatory, they're behavioural, the other five are made up based on your answers to the assessment. So so that's the portfolio of evidence, not that different from today, um, other than those rules we just said. And then you've got step five, which is called a professional discussion paper. Uh, and And again, this sounds a little bit like something you were just talking about in terms of what you've got to present which is yeah. a bit new so the professional discussion paper is a written report somewhere between three and five thousand words explaining your insights on, on in terms of how will you will contribute to the world of occupational safety and health so mm -hmm. it, for me there they're looking for anyone that's going to be chartered to really talk about how they're going to contribute and yes 
be a bigger part, you know. Yes. And then, and, and then, sorry, the, the final point, just yeah. to round things off, is the interview, which is the same as it is today. Yes. So, yeah. so those are all the steps. So, sorry, what, what were you going to say there? So I was actually going to input a bit of advice on that last okay, one about brilliant. the, you know, three to five thousand word and on, on what basically what impact you're going to make. How do you see things? How do you know, yeah. how are you going to change the future? Um, us Brits and, and indeed, um, you know, a number of other uh, countries out there, we're very good at not wanting to big ourselves up, not wanting yes. to talk about us, not wanting to say how wonderful we are. And, and you know, and this is awesome. We don't do that. Yeah. But do that. It is uncomfortable. Um, we had questions and, and we still see them now in the Nibosh diploma about, you know, um, uh, refer yourself to or, or um, what's the word I'm looking for, where you compare yourselves to the styles of an authentic leader. People yes. really struggle with those types of questions. But, Agreed, yeah. but do it. Go for it. Because, you know, you're on this journey for a reason. <laughs> You must you must know what you're doing. Yay. So, yeah, so yeah. really give give it some oomph. And and yes, it's uncomfortable, but go for it. I, I just think that's fantastic. That is great advice because you, you're absolutely right. I mean, not everyone's like that, of course. But yes, I mean, that's the I don't know what it is. It's just, yeah, we don't want to talk about how brilliant we are because it's yeah. like all the stuff you said, you know, it's um, arrogant, whatever. But, yeah. you know, and, and that's why sometimes the IOSH process is uncomfortable because you are having to talk about how brilliant you are and what you've done. Yeah, uh, yeah so that, that's fantastic advice and, and yes. be useful to, to everyone watching or, or listening, I think. Um, okay, brilliant. Um, and and just I'm just interested overall, you and I have talked about this sort of new way of, of doing things that's coming in summer 2024. What's your view on, on it? Do you think good, bad? What, what, what do you um, think? So I actually think that this can only benefit the whole IOSH chartership process because okay. I feel, and I might be wrong, um, but I feel that IOSH are really making an effort in looking into the culture, the understanding and the right. behaviour so that when you earn your chartership, they are confident that when you go out into the world, you are you have the right behaviours, you have the right um, you know, output rather yeah. than, yeah, and if I may, um, uh, knowing some chartered memberships and knowing the work that I'm having to do, occasionally I scratch my head and go, oh, okay. it's interesting, considering the work I'm going through, that I get that type of response that kind of feels a bit okay. like a legacy response instead of a what, what future health and safety should look like. So I yeah. think this is them focusing on your culture your behavior and and driving that right way forward that's at least that's how i hope that's yeah. that's what i hope their vision is okay yeah i mean that that's that sounds right to me i mean my um my involvement with iosh has been from when when the chartered membership used to be i would say relative a lot easier than it is now to, hmm. to get and you know even i'm shooting myself in the foot here but even when i got to, to chartered membership you know it was a lot <laughs> It's a lot easier than it is now. I mean, honestly, uh, but you're right. I think, you know, it's going into we know, don't we, to be a good health and safety practitioner. You need to really have that culture piece, that behavioral bit if you're going to exactly. drive it forward. And exactly. and I think, yeah, you're right. You know, that is there's, there's a hint of that in, in terms of what they're pushing here. Definitely. OK, interesting. Brilliant. So so just to recap uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, IOSH in general, the, the current route um really key headline points here you know yeah. old diploma route one new diploma 2020 after that diploma yeah. route two and that's yes. what you're going through With and the then coming steps. in yeah yeah nine steps and coming then in summer 2024 we've got one route not two one route that's it and it's six steps uh, and you know our general uh, view there is well it, it's certainly simpler in, in terms of we know what the steps are. There's not mm -hmm. multiple routes. Straightforward. So we know yes, where we are. Yes. But as you've said there, it is more about, you know, the culture and, and getting deeper into foot. You know, more than just, do you know what the Health and Safety yes. Work Act says? It's exactly. a lot more than that, right? Yes. OK, brilliant. Fantastic. So um, and the other thing we said is when we get together in 
you know, a couple of months, something like that, you will have done that assessment piece. You, you're very yes. excited about it, I can see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement, that's the word. <laughs> that's it. Yes, you should write that down. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you can sort of tell us how that's gone. I think that, again, you know, like the whole of, of this section of the podcast, that will be incredibly useful uh, for members. Um, OK, brilliant. So. Um, uh, good luck, first of Thank all. You. I mean, Thank you. Thank you very much. Outside of yeah. the, the podcast, you know, yes. um, and uh, we'll speak then. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed today's show. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>